today we are 1.9 so far and then the whole month we are at 72.4 What is going on guys? Hopefully you guys are enjoying your day so far. Just want to let you guys know we have an incredible video today coming to you guys brand new. A little bit of a sneak peek behind the scenes of our BSF masterminds for you guys privately. So take a look and I know you guys will enjoy it and I'll see you guys at the end of the video. Give us like, like, a, like a two minute kind of walkthrough of your story, by the way. I think, I think it's pretty interesting. You told me your story. I, I was taken back. So walk, walk us through that a little bit. Yeah, bro. So like two years ago, um, I was doing Uber Eats because I couldn't work in the U.S. And then I I was able to start getting, um, like I started, I was able to get to back to work into like the financial industry. And I started working at the bank last year. You know, Kelly told me like, oh, why don't we try drop shipping? And I was like, that's a scam. And I, I would always get hit with like your, um, your retargeting ads. <laughs> and like, I started watching a course from Gabriel Beltran. Like I, we tested one thing you know, it didn't do well. We paid someone to coach us like one on one. I learned a ton of stuff, but quite honestly, we lost like twenty five hundred bucks on testing. And then um, at the beginning of this year, I saw that that guy that had coached me was in your mastermind. I said, "Well, this is like this has like this cannot be a scam." And bro, that was in January. Then in April, I saw like your your interview with Kim, and I was like, "Oh yeah, this guy's legit." And I had already created my store, my product and stuff like that. And I decided to join in May. And, you know, I basically took a month to like go over most of the content because like it's a lot. I did the algorithmic targeting. I run the product through the product research system to make sure, you know, it was like work. It would work and beyond videos to get uh, to create the make the creatives, launch that stuff. And first month, 9K, the second month. 18 the third month we did like 15 the fourth month we did uh, i think it's like 38 second month we did 78 and this month we're already at 70 so amen that's a hell of a progression and overall i think your consistency up until this point with making sure your supply chain's in line is what's got you to this point so consistently so profitably as well so again man it's an awesome story big congrats to you you came such a long way dude you don't win in q4 because you did work in Q4, you win in Q4 because you did work in Q1. One of the most important things to realize in all of e-commerce is the power of consistency and the power of developing a foundation early on in your business. No one wants to go ahead and wake up with volatility with all of your budget split, you know, squished into one particular ad set. And that one ad set might do well a few days out of the week, but also goes to crap a few days out of the week as well, leading you to have inconsistencies, volatility, and a lot of anxiety when you wake up in the morning and when you go to bed at night. One of the biggest things for me, because I hate anxiety, I hate having volatility, and I like consistency in my life and predictability, because I can see how much money I'm going to make and predict it. Okay? I would like to go ahead and have a consistent system that allows me to maintain consistency. Notice the key here, guys. I keep saying consistency. Who wants a business that has volatility? You want a business that has consistency. Isn't that the ideal scenario? Right? Would you let me know down below? You guys want a business with volatility or a business with consistency? Okay. The reason you see so much volatility in all these Facebook groups is because people don't have a real system like this. People are just launching random ads with single interest, not caring what they do. And their ads go good one day, shit next day and vice versa. Okay. When you have a system like this, you're going to actually be able to have consistency and predict and predictability in your revenue, which is so important. You were talking about consistency. Do you have like a, almost an estimate on how many hours somebody should be putting in a day in the beginning stages? Absolutely. So first of all, like when I first started, I would do nothing all day except for this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not everyone has that luxury though. Okay. But everyone's got 12, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m. You got to be a night owl. You got to do it. Okay. Yeah. You got to do it. No exceptions. You got to be up till 4 a.m. Sometimes with your eyes bleeding because you got to get the damn job done because you want to get the product launched, whatever. If you got to be that type of person, but don't break it down into hours, break it down into developing your assets. And essentially what you're doing here is making sure you're breaking down everything into categories. Okay. Product research. You're finding five products today, five products tomorrow, five products next day, five products next day. You get 20 products within four days like that. You just focus on finding five yeah. products and not sleeping until you do. Okay. That's the name of the game there. Targeting only do targeting. 
products only do products videos only do videos essentially what i'm saying here is don't do a product here then a targeting sheet here then some copy here you'll never find your mojo product research find your 20 don't do anything else until you're done with that 20 then you do uh your your, your videos right so, or i'm sorry your landing pages then you do all 20 landing pages do nothing else till all 20 landing pages are done right you, you get one landing page perfected in platinum then copy all the other land copy that landing page for all the other ones then same thing with the targeting sheet same thing with the videos compartmentalizing your workload and saying hey today i'm doing five products tomorrow i'm doing five products set yourself up in advance with one of these okay because this is going to change the game for you especially with categorizing your workload because you can literally put down every day what needs to be done and as long as you have discipline and you can say i'm not sleeping until this is done and i'll stay up until 5 a.m if i have to that's fine and that's what you should do and that's how you go ahead and make the quickest progress we have something called the three-day rule okay day one no view content kill it day two no add to cart kill it and day three no purchase kill it which means in the first three days of running our algorithmic targeting campaigns we'll be killing off audiences okay if there's not a view content on day one if there's not an add to cart on day two, and if there's not a purchase by day three. This allows us to go ahead and safeguard our ad spend. We don't ever want to go out of the box and start spending more money than we should when an audience is not showing sure signs of consistency. It's really important you guys understand that because at the end of the day, when you're allowing spend to go through to audiences that don't deserve it because they're not showing proper KPIs, you are literally just burning money. Okay? It's imperative that you understand that when you look at audiences, you must be strict and quick to kill. Because quick to kill is what separates a good entrepreneur from a phenomenal e-commerce entrepreneur. Someone who knows when to cut audiences and diversify that budget elsewhere is ultimately someone who's going to be very successful and very quick with decision making and not making emotional drastic decisions, but rather making logical decisions just like in trading. You should never be emotional with your advertising here in e-commerce. Straight logical. Okay? Never emotional. Ever. With that being said, algorithmic targeting launches 11 audiences on $5 a piece. We go ahead and launch day one. We're following a three-day rule. Day one, no view content, kill it. Day two, no active cart, kill it. And day three, no purchase, kill it. As we go ahead and start to kill off audiences, about half of the audiences will probably be killed off, while the other half will start to perform pretty good, and some of them will even start to get sales. The goal of hitting audiences is to find people who want to buy your products. And just like Omar said, and pretty much everyone says something around the same, around the same nurture, okay, is to go ahead and find new pockets. Finding new pockets of audiences is one of the most magical things that you can have in your actual ad account. And what does this mean? It means that when an audience starts to do well, that you scaling it is going to go ahead and really go deeper within that pocket. So if you're starting to see on a certain day your audiences are starting to do really good, or one audience is starting to do good to get more sales than usual, it found a winning pocket. And if you have an audience with a winning pocket, there's probably thousands more of those pockets or those people within that same audience. Which means you have to go ahead and duplicate that audience that's doing well, that's profitable, five times in the same exact campaign. This is gonna go ahead and develop further your infrastructure. Algorithmic with 11, and some audiences that get sales get duplicated five times in the same campaign. This gives us what we call a horizontal scale structure, allowing us to actually develop consistency and not actually focus on vertical scale that's going to really give us volatility. And so I'm looking at this product and there's two designs. One of them is really popular on Amazon but there's another one that's kind of new, I think, and it offers more function. So it's like, um, should, should I choose, do you think it would be better to go with the, the popular one on Amazon or the one with more function? So, it's the same product, different, different design. Well, the whole thing is your marketing angle is based off of the functionality and beneficial usage of the product, not on the design. If the design plays a part in the usage of it, then that becomes its own utility for sure. But benefit and usage over looks 100% of the time, because our angling is based off of emotion and logic. Okay. Logic has to do with benefit and utility. So we have a general store and we have multiple products, different niches in the general store. We're only running one creative to one product and then the other products are just there. Correct. That's exactly correct. You don't want to go ahead and, and expand your ad creatives until you actually see consistency, Marcus. So that's 100% right. You should be testing one at a time with one creative, then expanding outward after you see consistency via the KPIs. Mm -hmm. So what would the point be of having that general store if we're only testing one product? Because you're able to go ahead and not have to create landing pages constantly for, or full on one product landing pages for every single product. At the end of the day, when you have your whole general store built, you have every landing page created in advance. And then you be able to see consistency. And then after you see consistency, you then go ahead and create a one product store for that particular product on that general store. Ah, uh, okay, got you, got you. 
What about would, it, would I be able to hide all the other products and just have one as the, the main page and then I mean, hide you, all the other ones? You can do that if you want to go down that route. It's not going to make a winner a winner. It's not going to turn a winner into a loser. It's not going to really change much. So keep in mm -hmm. mind, what we're looking for here is just consistency. And we want to move as quick as we possibly can until we see that consistency and then develop a one product store. So you could do that, but I'd recommend just separating your homepage into categories to where it looks like a general kind of general store branded site. So guys, what you saw right there is a little bit of Justin Wall and myself in action, right? A little bit of mastermind love. That was our actual Black Friday experience. That was a one-off little experience that we created for people who wanted to get involved in Black, uh, on Black Friday. A uh, bit of a less expensive version for people to see how we do business here at BSF so they can actually get exposed to our full VIP personal mentorship as well, uh, which a lot of people are actually upgrading to, which is awesome. As you can see, phenomenal masterminds here. We actually had our VIP mastermind today at noon. We had so many people with, with crazy results. It was ridiculous. And the thing is, that's just typical here at BSF. So I'm not even surprised. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed that little behind the scenes take and uh, see you guys soon.